episode. For those of you just joining us now, uh, Reverb is an environmental nonprofit organization. We're normally on tour with a bunch of bands like Maroon 5 and Dave Matthews Band and Guster and uh, Billie Eilish and the Lumineers and a bunch of other folks greening their tours and engaging their fans to take action for the environment. But of course, with tours on pause, uh, we thought we'd come up with something else so we could still do the work we're doing and bring a little reverb into your homes. So the Quarantine Kitchen is, since everyone's cooking a lot these days, um, is a place where musicians and uh, other celebrities and other interesting folks can come and cook their favorite recipes from their kitchens live to you. Hi, Laura Elizabeth. I see you. Um, I am looking at the comments. Uh, tonight's guest is Joe Pizzapia from Guster. Katie Lang, uh, he's a producer as well. He's produced Ben Folds 5, as well as Gus from Katie Lang, a bunch of other great artists. He's an incredible solo artist in his own right. We've known Joe a long, long time. Uh, he toured in Guster for years and years and, uh, and has remained a very close friend and brother to us and to me personally. So I could not be happier. Uh, did I mention who I am? I'm Adam. I also <laughs> play in Guster and I'm co-founder of the environmental group Reverb. Uh, anyway, welcome to Reverse Quarantine Kitchen, Joe Pizzapia. Come on in. There he is. How you doing, Joe? Oh, that, that was a really beautiful introduction. I was I was crying a little bit, and it wasn't just because of the onions. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing for us tonight, Joe? Um, I've got a, I've got a little vegan black bean soup in the works nice uh jenny and i like um we like to soak the beans overnight and then she cooked them i was gonna do lentils but then i opened the fridge i was like oh i forgot we have black beans already already cooked you know already nice. soaked and cooked so let's make a black bean soup and i'm not a recipe guy i'm just more like what do we got in the fridge i usually just play chopped every time <laughs> so i had to kind of put together a recipe i forgot to put the mushrooms in mushrooms i'm going to add that to the because it's i feel like mushrooms really make vegan stuff taste good they got i hate to say the word umami like i know what i'm talking about but it's umami. <laughs> well, you know what i'm talking about and they add umami it's all right joe you can be that guy you grew up like so you, can we just talk a little bit about like cooking and how you like grew up around food and what food means to you and how you got into it yeah man uh I, well, I grew up not far from from you. Yeah. In uh, a little town called Rawway, New Jersey, and um, my dad had an Italian store called the Merchants of Venice. And the Merchants of Venice was like, you know, my grandmother worked there, my aunts, my cousins, my mom, everybody worked there. My sister, my brother, and I always preferred to be more in the kitchen than the front because, you know. I just liked hanging with my grandmother and the ladies back there and they would show me tricks of the trade, you know? And, and it always smelled so, it was fun to work with the food. I loved it. You know? So was it your grandmother that taught you how to cook? Like, where did you learn how to cook? Cause I, listen, you've cooked. I've, we've spent a lot of time in your house. You're in Nashville. We recorded two albums there. We wrote together there. Like what, Um. so I know you're a wonderful. I want to interrupt this conversation because I have a time sensitive matter. I, just want to tell you that I caramelized the shit out of these onions. <laughs> you know, like I kind of, I, it's not in real time. I did that a little before I called you or whatever you called me. But I just wanted to say it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm caramelizing the shit out of it. And then I'm yeah. in the, uh, just to get, you know, for the vegan stuff, you got to work hard for the flavor. It's like when you're mixing bass guitar, you got to beat the bass guitar up in the track to get it to sit in the track. Yeah. You know? So those onions, you you didn't accidentally saute the shit out of them that's what that was on purpose that's what you wanted i like them like that sometimes i go back and forth sometimes i just want them soft but it really is a nice uh sort of it gives a good rich depth when you caramelize them like that uh, and it's it takes a little while but you just wash your dishes do everything else while you're doing it you know what i mean all right. So actually, yeah, while we're, while we're actually talking about the recipe, so what, what do you do? Cause you, I know you're just casually cooking, but for those who want to actually follow the recipe, it is available. We have a link here on the Facebook page and also you can go to reverb slash quarantine kitchen and it's there as well. But uh, while we're for people who might be following along who, or who want to watch this later and follow along, what are you doing right now? Okay. So 
but I, as I said, as, as we discussed, um, caramelize those onions. Then I prepared a little bit, you know, just chopped up some carrots and celery and um, poblano peppers. I used two poblanos, three celery stalks, two carrots. I threw that all in there. Let that kind of saute a little bit. And, um, and then I'm going to get these mushrooms ready, put them in there while we're talking. I'm going to throw in some garlic. And then when it gets nice and sticky, with the, uh, I'm going to throw in some white wine and kind of deglaze it. You know what I mean? And then keep evaporating that wine a couple, maybe one or two times. we got time here. Yeah. The other thing I'm doing is a vegan stock on the side. So I'll show you here. I got, um, I save all the scraps, you know, whenever we cook and it, put them in the freezer. My favorite thing for the vegan stuff, once again, is all these shiitake stems are like kind of tough to eat, but they really make the broth come to life. So wait, hold on. This is an important thing because, you know, this is part of this is, is about sustainability. So you take all your food scraps, your vegetable scraps that, that are what, like that you don't want to compost that are a little bit better than that and, and freeze them so you can make a veggie broth later on? Always, yeah. That's and awesome. you'd be surprised how little goes in the compost when you do that. Because everything has flavor on it. You know, the ends of the onions, the ends of the cat, whatever. There was uh, some green onions that were like kind of on the verge and we weren't going to use them for anything. We threw them in there. The shiitake stems. We get those, I don't know what they're called, the enaki mushrooms. The bottom of that goes in there. And um, yeah, it always makes a beautiful broth, you know? It's great. Yeah. And so, but then when you're done with those, because obviously those, you remove those after they've been doing their broth and then you compost is that the deal i'll show you i got this system um i got this yeah ostensibly that's what i'm going to do but i got this little guy right yeah so then when everything starts getting sticky i'll just kind of hover this with the ladle and just kind of make sure i don't get any big pieces in there yeah i got some, I got some whole peppercorns and uh bay leaf in there you know um i'm not a big technique guy i'm more of a ragamuffin almost like with everything I do, like musically <laughs> and, and cooking. I grew up, you know, it was Jersey style. It wasn't like Iron Chef or anything, but I want to show one thing I know how to do is cut an onion. I know, I know we, I'm getting sidetracked from what we were talking about. I just want to- No, that's all right. You're, it's great. Okay, so check this out. I just took the half. I'm gonna go down like this, little slices. But you're not going all the way through. Yeah, no, because you want to keep the integrity of that shape. Yeah. Almost to the end, so it's like this. Yeah. And then I'm going to go like this, bam, 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 like that. And then I'm going to just start. And look at those nice little dices, just perfect little, huh. little pieces, ready made. Just like little soft Legos that won't crush your feet. And then you just take that last piece and go like that. That's nice technique, Joe. Where'd you I learn that one? I learned that in um, a little town in Switzerland called Yanats. When I was traveling, I was traveling on my spontaneous little tour. And one of the places that I had friends of friends, she was a chef. And um, I said, well, she was making her birthday dinner. I said, well, put me to work. And she's like, that's not how you cut an onion. Do like this. I was like, fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I remember asking you about that tour, and you didn't say a whole lot other, uh, that didn't involve food. <laughs> you're like, oh, they cooked me this meal. Like you're, when you're going through Italy, oh, you just stay, and they, the first thing you do, you don't even really worry about sound check. You just go and sit down for a big dinner and play your show. Like, I, I don't think I really heard anything about how the music went. <laughs> the hospitality was almost unreasonably good. <laughs> it was like, I feel like such a bad host after being in Italy specifically, I, and Switzerland too, from the beautiful people in Holland. But, you know, the Italian, like we used, when you get there for uh, loaded, and before you even bring in your gear, there's like all this splatters of meat and cheese in Italy. <laughs> wine I mean, it's so ridiculous it's like it's kind of fantasy level you know obviously you're like why don't i live here you know exactly. but, uh, so you're living in nashville you've lived there a long time you you, you built a in a, a gorgeous studio in a, in a building on your property you recorded 
I think was, was Gusher the first record? Did we were we the first one to record a record there? You know what? I'll be honest with you. The very first thing I think I ever recorded in my studio ever was the demos for Easy Wonderful. Do you remember that night? And yeah. it, it was one of those rare times. And I think I'm gonna knock on wood right now, where I lost audio. <laughs> we are, literally, we lost like a session. Yeah. And we had a bus call at 11 and we had to push it back. And we were we had to re record Do You Love Me at like one in the morning, I swear. <laughs> and that was like the first, that was the first thing that we ever did in there. That's and then cool. Easy Wonderful was, yeah, it was a, it was kind of a, a, it was kind of like we were working on Easy Wonderful and I can't remember what came out first. Whether it was that or KD, I can't remember. I think it was Easy Wonderful. I think it was too. Yeah. Record that ever came out of Middle Tree. So then the second record you made was KD Lang. Yeah. Amazing. And then the third was Ben Folds Five. Why well, did make that year? Oh, because, you didn't. Um, you know Ben Folds uh, yeah, for Ohio yeah. uh, was stewarding over RCA Studio A. That's right. I, I forget how many rooms. I think there were three in the country, maybe, that they made to those specifications. And that was Chet Atkins' old studio. They had built it for a 96-piece orchestra. It was a beautiful, amazing studio. Um, so, yeah, we worked over there for that one. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and it, well as long as we're talking about music a little bit, you – one of the things that made me think about reaching out to you, other than knowing that I, you're a great cook and, and I wanted you on the show anyway, but then when I saw that you were you made an instrumental record to cook to, basically, right, and to eat to and have dinner party, like, can you talk about that a little bit? And you have, what, three tracks, I think, released right now? Yeah, I got three, um, three so far, four, is it three or four? Three, yeah, three, three have come out. Anyway, everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody. I imagine a lot of people have a cooking playlist, and... I was just inspired by the sound of mine. And I, it was, I always get really slow at the beginning of the year and Nashville winter is kind of beautiful and romantic. Like it's super gray, not super cold. Um, and really, really mellow. And I like it a lot. The holidays are over all that hoopla, all that craziness, right? Super chill. And I went into the studio and I just started, playing the nylon string guitar. And one thing after another, I'm like, you guys ever hear this book? It's called The War of Art. Um, a couple of friends have turned me on to it. Okay. And his, his thing is every day you go and you write. You, a writer writes every day. It's almost like that thing of where they say inspiration is for amateurs. You ever hear that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so every day I would try to write a piece for the record. And it was like, and, and it was during like early February where I was really making my strides. And so I looked up what was specific about that time of year. Why do I like it so much? This specific pre-spring uh, mm -hmm. that happens. And um, I found this thing. It's called like midway between the solstice, the winter solstice and the spring equinox. It's uh, directly in between. It's something called the Imbach and it hits the first week of February. And it's kind of this feast. Um, Imbalk is a Celtic word that means in the belly. How do you spell that? It's I M B O L C. Huh. Imbalk. Okay. Imbalk. It's kind. Of, it's not the best sounding word. <laughs> I mean, you know. But that's the name of the record. That's the name of the record. Imbalk. <laughs> awesome. And how many? So I'm how many? Marketing genius. I'm a marketing genius. <laughs> <laughs> so you released three tracks. How many more? How many tracks do you have? How many will you be releasing? Uh, I think there's 11 or 12. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. And you just kind of trickle them out as you have been. I'm going to do four singles, and then I'm going. I hate the word drop. I'm going to drop the record. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We have a link right now in the comments too, where you can see your playlist along with that, that includes the three tracks that you uh, have already released. And for people who want to follow Joe on his Instagram or, or anywhere on his socials and pay attention or just follow him on Spotify, I guess is really where you, where you want to see. Yeah. The, uh, I like to have conversations with people on the internet 
from time to time. You know what I mean? So stop by and say hello. I don't like to argue a lot, but although lately I've been arguing a lot, it's become like sort of a hobby that Jenny makes fun of me for. <laughs> but I'm trying to argue in the, um, I'm trying to use nonviolent communication with my arguments. <laughs> it only goes so far. I'm going to put a little chili powder. I got, um, I already did the salt and pepper, so I'm just going to spin the rotisserie. This stuff right here is like, what do you it's, got there? Uh, it's hard to see. Uh, it's Chipotle. Oh, yeah. And um, good job on the pronunciation. A lot of people mess up that L and T combo. Yeah, man. Chipotle like Nick Nobley. <laughs> Can't go wrong. It's really, it's really smells like beautifully smoked, delicious, but it's really high. You got to be careful with this stuff. Great. It's hot, right? I go easy on it. Yeah. Go easy. Um, and then, uh, oh, you know what the, I mean, honestly, one of my favorite of all the spices is cumin. I mean, cumin is so good with black beans and any kind of beans, I feel like. Um, I just love it. I'm going to put a lot in. All right. Hey, uh, there's been a little bit of weird technical lag. It's not terrible, but are you, you're using Chrome, yeah? So I got the Chrome going, yeah. Okay, cool. Then we're cool. Just a little bit of an internet lag, but that's, the, you know, that's that's the world we're living in right now. What are you going to do? Yeah. Even like, you know, you hear that with like people on NPR, like Frank Langford. Where are you, Frank? You know what I mean? <laughs> I was thinking the name Frank... <laughs> Frank Lankford on NPR because it sounds like someone in Jersey saying Lankford. <laughs> Lankford. Frank Lankford. You know the guy, Frank Lankford. <laughs> My brother and I always talk about that one. So how have you still been during quarantine? Like, how are you feeling? Like, how are you coping? How's, it sounds like you've been staying very creative. Yeah, man. You know, Nashville's a good place to be uh, when things are down tempo. That's a, that's, um, like how I got so creative with the record. When nothing's happening, you find this, you can escape into your own dream world a little bit, yeah. you know? Um, and try to stay positive, try to stay busy. I want to do more live shows. I was really enjoying that. I want to do that. Yeah, more. Awesome. You know, I loved about your live shows, especially early on where people were just kind of playing the acoustic guitar from their laptop and using their built-in mics. You were like, you know, you did it in your studio. You had effects set up you actually said, like one of, the, one of the, like the first live streams i heard during quarantine i was like this sounds proper finally man i was dreaming of scheming about that for a while yeah and um it was really fun to sort of yeah it took me a few days to figure it out like how how to present it and just get levels and then now that i have i have a template on my pro tools i could just honestly i still have those mics on those amps i haven't touched anything you know, that's just all set up turnkey. I just turned it on and I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to rock. When, so when's the last time you've done it and will you do it again soon? I want to, I want to get back into it. Um, I haven't done it in like a month. Yeah. You know, uh, partly because I was tired of hearing myself sing the same songs. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everybody has that. So that's why I started doing more covers, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and it probably makes sense to take a break from it. I mean, I think there's a lot of, I don't know, I can't tell. I guess people chime in, we'll look at your comments, but are people tired of watching live stream music, like people with their guitars at home? I can't I can't tell. It's something that the band talks about a lot now, like, you know, yeah. aren't people kind of tired? It's, it's also tough to, I think it takes a lot of guts to do it because it's not the uh, easiest presentation. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's really, uh, you have to be willing to be super vulnerable. <laughs> well, that's it, right? You have no feedback. If people like it, the crowd goes mild after every song. <laughs> exactly. You have no idea. <laughs> Although there's the comments, but it's hard to, it's really hard to, like I tried to, to keep up with it. <laughs> you know, the talk about the lag, man. It's like the phone is doing pretty well with the filming, but on my laptop, it's like, oh, here we go. I can't, you know. I can't see things in real time. And then I, I was listening to headphones. I'm like, what's that sound that go, that's going, what is that? <laughs> it's because my laptop is so hot from 
trying to roll Facebook in, you know, live or whatever. It's so hot. It's like <laughs> that's amazing. You're All right, right. But, but the, feedback, the feedback has been uh, so far very positive in the in favor of hearing you play live again. In general, I think people are excited about still hearing live stream music. I mean, I love the feedback. We don't get your feedback right now. Are you getting this instantly? This feedback that you talk about? Yeah. If you look, uh, can you see it? <laughs> I'm just busting. I'm just busting chops. You busting chops. Yeah, but I'm just you know because now we have to double check everything because we don't know who's propagandist and who's saying the real stuff. We don't really know anymore. You just got to go with your gut. Wear the mask. Some people say don't wear the mask. Nah, you got to wear the mask. I know that. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> How, so, I mean, God, I was just thinking about Nashville a little bit because when we were, you know, we saw you toward the end of our tour. Well, in the, it was really the beginning of our tour, but then it was the, suddenly the end because of the shutdown. Yeah. But I was just thinking about, God, Nashville had just gotten rocked by the, by the tornado. Remember? And I remember because Ryan hit me up and he said, you guys had a day off between somewhere in here, and I can't remember where. And he was like, is it cool to come to Nashville or should we stay out of the way? Yeah. And I said, no, the vibe in Nashville is excellent right now because people come together in those uh, moments of catastrophe. Like the Brotherhood of Man is fully realized. Yeah. And this town has got a soul to it, man. It's When push comes to shove, everybody helps each other. It's really beautiful. It's awesome. And you feel like that, like people were able to sustain that when, you know, it was like a one, two punch, like the tornado came, wasn't that like early March and then boom, mid -March, like a week or two later, the shutdown. I, I think the tornado happened a week. No, it happened two weeks before you got here. Yeah. Which you guys got, I remember exactly. Cause it was March 9th. You played at the, I believe it was March 8th or 9th. It was a Sunday night. And we went out that night afterwards. I remember we had, because it was our friend Jordan's birthday, we went over to the Village Pub. Yeah. And I said to Jenny, I said, after reading all this news and stuff, let's make this our last, like, sort of night out for a while and lay low. Right. And then I talked to you guys the next day, and you're like, yeah, that, guess what? That's it. We're going home. Yeah. Everybody had this. It was all coming together at that point. So I'll be honest with you. It was unbelievable. It was unusual to have all these, you know, things right in a row. To add uh, insult to injury, like a month after that, we had this thing called the Derrico, which is like a straight line, a uh, really fast windstorm, and it blew up. It left people without power uh, for weeks, like a month after the tornado. You know, um, you know, trees down everywhere, houses caved in, whatever. Not as bad, not as crazy as tornado, but still like a lot of power loss. So, and you know, um, I haven't really been driving around too much, but you know, just coming through my neighborhood, it's like, wow, not a lot has been done on some of these streets. They're pretty, they're still pretty beat up, you know? Not bad. Not bad. Well, you know what, this, maybe this is a good time to talk about the Cliff Bar things. Cliff Bar has been a, a sponsor of this whole series for Quarantine Kitchen and as part of their support, uh, they are donating a thousand bars to hungry kids and families uh, in the town of, you know, to the organization of the guest chef's choice. And that's you. And you chose uh, safe Haven family shelter in Nashville. Yes. And I'll be honest with you. The reason I even knew about safe Haven is because it's where my sister, that's where she works. Okay. And, um, so I knew what they do, which is they handle taking in people who are homeless from what, from one reason or the other. A lot of times it's because of violence in the families. And so the families have become separated and disheveled, you know, put out on the street and they take care of them. And, you know, they have a lot of services. In fact, I asked the director if she would share with me like a little soundbite, you know, and, and rather than butcher it, I would love to just read what she said. Sure. Um, she said, um, you know, we keep families experiencing, uh, we keep families from experiencing homelessness. Last year, we housed 108 families. This year, despite the pandemic, we've already housed 76 families, and we've assisted in preventing 69 families from getting evicted. We provide wrap 
wraparound services to support the families. In our program, they're paired with a case manager, housing specialists, and an employment navigator. In addition, we have a youth program coordinator, coordinator that acts as a bridge between the families and the school system, as well as pairing the children with volunteer tutors from Vanderbilt Students of Education. We not only provide financial support to assist the family, we have this robust support of donors who supply gift cards and tangible items to our families and you know things like microwaves, pots and pans, bedding, toiletries. They kind of have a lot of drives periodically throughout the year and they'll kind of call out for what they need. Obviously in the winter, it's like different needs. And um, and even I remember like my sister, uh, they, get, they get a lot of gifts for the kids around Christmas, which is awesome. And they kind of say, these are the kind of gifts the kids want. You know what I mean? That's awesome. It's really but, beautiful, you know? Oh, great. Well, thanks to Safe Haven Nashville for doing that. And thanks to Cliff Bar for donating 1,000 bars. It's actually part of They've actually committed to 14 million bars. Wow. Um, they did it right when, when COVID struck. They did 7 million bars to uh, frontline healthcare workers. And then the beginning of the summer, they committed another, another 7 million to, to exactly what uh, – Safe Haven is all about where it's about feeding kids, especially when school's out. A lot of these yep. these kids, that's that's where they were getting their food. Um, so to, to help with some of that insecurity, um, that's what they're doing. So thanks, Cliff Bar, and thanks, Joe, for picking Safe Haven. Thanks to Safe Haven, safehaven.org if you want to check it out um, for all the work that they are doing. You can learn to support them more as well. So where are we at with this recipe? Let's go back to that. I was gonna just say thank you for all the work you're doing. I mean, I mean, I remember when you kind of started the whole, the whole thing. You know, it was kind of like a dream. I remember you just, you became aware of like, man, look at look at look at our footprint here. Look at yeah. this, and look at how much waste. I mean, we always talked about, we had the ongoing joke about the half waters and the bus. You know, the open water, and then it's like somebody's got a cough. I always and for COVID, it's like you just don't want any cough. Uh, but you were you really. I'm really thankful for all the work you've done and I've learned so much from obviously watching you and even being able to just pick your brain late night on some of these things. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. You were there for a lot of those early, like the very first uh, campus consciousness tour that Guster and that was the first time Guster worked with Reverb. We were lucky enough to work with, you know, Dave Matthews band and Route five and Jack Johnson before. And then it was, it was really, you know, of course, I was like, well, what can I do for my own band? How can this work for us? And it was that when we were doing all those colleges. So it was really, you know, you and, and Guster at that point helping launch this campus consciousness tour, which we did for years and years afterward, almost every semester for 10 years. Yeah, it's so cool, man. And, you know, even the spirit of it was so fun, too, having different people on the road that were excited to be on the road and the volunteers every day and just, you know, it was, it's really nice to see the enthusiasm, momentum. And then I was really psyched when I saw the, you know, how passionate Billie Eilish was on TV about it. And just, that was so cool. You know what I mean, yeah. these young people are just so inspired and so beautiful. It's really, I really have a lot of faith and hope and the people that are coming after us, you know, they're really on the, they're really get, they get this stuff, you know? They do. I mean, and you have to, and at the same time, we have to make sure that we're not handing them a total piece of shit, <laughs> right? So that's the key. Like, I love listening to Greta because she's just like, what are you doing? Don't, why are you leaving this world in this state for us to deal with? Like, you should be dealing with this right now. And so that, that I, you know, it's important to use their passion, use their voices, and also listen to them and make sure that we're doing our part so that, that you know, there is a transition happening, but we need, it's still kind of in, our generation's hands and we got to make sure that what we're passing is is salvageable <laughs> that's exactly. where we're at. yeah it's wild all right so where are we at with this recipe let's go back to business let's get back right. to business, <laughs> so over here <laughs> i got like um look at this i got all the mushrooms this is all the vegetables just cooking away over here nice and nice i put some wine in there but you didn't even notice I did it because we were talking so much. So how much wine did you put in there? Just a little splash or what? Just enough. <laughs> Just kidding. I put like a nice swig in there, like, you know, four ounces or so. Okay. And then um, I got the beans here and they're cold. They're cooked, but they're cold. They're unsalted. You know, you never want to add salt to the beans. 
or at least Jenny says, don't do it. I don't I forget why. I think it's because they get tough. Okay. Now, why do you not add salt to the beans? She heard it on the radio. I heard it on the radio. So there you go. That's all you need to know. You don't add salt to the beans. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> is she working in her What I love is that you guys both have your studios. Yeah. Jenny is this amazing artist. Uh, what's that? Let's plug her for a second. What's the name of her uh, her business again? Love, what's the name of your website? Jennyoaken.com. It's jennyoaken.com. J E N N I E O K O N.com. Look at her beautiful stuff. It's amazing. It's like these little miniature worlds, and it's so beautiful. And her her studio is like a little elves workshop that has just all these incredible little miniature. I would go over there if she let love. Can I come over? Come on, please. Man, like no, she's so shy. I don't have to show you. I don't have to show you. I'll show your stuff. Or just pass one little like one little cork glass world over through the window there. Show me something cool. Um, <laughs> So like that's Jenny, we put you on the spot. Offices through here, you know what I mean? So we could talk. Yeah. A lot of times we'll share the radio, you know what I mean? I don't know um, if you're going to be able to see this. Oh, yeah. We'll get it up close. Yeah, 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 nice. This is worth it. I love these so much. Okay. So get real close. It's amazing. It's just, I don't even know how she can do it. Right, oh you got to get right up to the camera. Yeah. yeah. She makes those trees. There it is. Those flowers. It's just this little universe, and they're all one of a kind. It's really incredible. Check out the website, JennyOpen.com. Yeah. My lady's always got something magical and miniature cooking up in there. <laughs> She's so, always got something cooking up. So what's left as far as cooking up on our recipe? Because we're getting kind of near time, a little bit. Let me tell you what's not going to happen. We're probably not going to eat it because... But I'll t explain the rest of it because we got too busy talking and I didn't time budget my time wisely enough. I put the beans in. Yeah. I'm gonna put the broth in now. And once the broth gets hot, well, the broth is already hot. But once everything with the beans, everything get cooked, I'm just gonna add the greens in last minute because I want them to stay nice and um, not like, you know, bar the greens you get at the barbecue place all. So when you say greens, that can be anything like you, what are you going to put in there? Kale or something? I got a little blend with kale, spinach, and chard. Nice. And it's just, you know, just a nice, it's a, it's a lot. That's amazing. That is a lot. Because it's like, this is our energy meal. You know what I mean? We're going to go for it. Are, so, you, are you doing the Ascal? Yeah, we're doing it right now. We're a month in. Do you, can we talk about that for a second? Because it seems to me, I mean, the simplest version of it is what? Two thirds fruits and vegetables to one third uh, protein and grains. That's it. And um, which is, God, that's a fairly, it's good for you. And it's also, uh, it's more sustainable. It totally is. And, you know, she's really big on like what kind of protein, what kind of grains. It's very, it's really an elimination diet. So you can see what your body is it's inflammation around and we were due for it like i'm a, i'm not a purist like i said i'm not a systems guy but i'm more of a binger and a purger like i was <laughs> living the sort of i was living the high life with the crack in the beer at four o'clock cooking dinner i don't know what you're talking about what are you talking yeah, about what are you talking about yeah, everybody knows what that's like and all of a sudden i'm like man look at this beer belly i better do something about it now and we have to cook everything anyway it's the best time to get on the anti-inflammatory thing. So you're right. Basically, she wants you to have very uh, healthy sources of protein. And really, when, you, when it comes right down to it, all the sources that she's suggesting are also happen to coincide with sustainability. You know, like where it's like beef is one that's not really on the table um, because of what it does for inflammation. Right. As far as, you know, farm raised chickens and stuff, the antibiotics and everything else, you don't want that because you're cleansing, you know? So you want to have a pastured chicken, but pastured chickens are like 25 bucks a piece. So we get one <laughs> right. a month or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a big treat, but guess what? We eat beans all the time. I love beans. I have chickpeas in the morning, black beans at night. Sometimes we have quinoa, you know, it's, it's fantastic. You could really do a lot with that. 
get a lot of flavor out of it, you know? Yeah, you turned me on. So I forget how to spell Abascal. But... Oh, it's A-B-A-S-C-A-L. Yeah, and the book is called Abascal's Way, right? The Abascal Way, and yeah. the full title is The Abascal Way to Quiet Inflammation. So some people call it the TQI diet. Uh, and honestly, I've been on it a month. I haven't lost much weight yet, but I feel way better. Like, you know, like my body feels better. So for sure. But last time I lost the equivalent of a Fender de Deluxe Reverb Amplifier. <laughs> which is like, because I was like, all right, how much is 35 pounds? Like, well, pick up. I was selling an amp, and I'm like, pick that amp up. That's how much I was carrying around unsuspecting, you know? Yeah. So it's going to feel good when all that I could. I could be like, no, I'm not throwing away those clothes because one day I might fit them again and be right. I'll be right about it. Well, so, and what's I think what's cool about that is it's, you know, I so I, you turned me on to it. I did it for a while. I come and go in it as well. Although I will say what stuck with me is I've been eating just tons of fruits and vegetables. And so like my yeah. breakfast now is always, like always saute something green and put an egg or something on top of it, cracking over it. Um, and that's that, that to me is breakfast. I almost don't feel like I'm starting my day right if I don't have like a really solid portion of veggies. And it just helps flush the system. I guess for me, it's not about weight or, or, or anything other than I just like the way it feels to be eating lots of fruits and vegetables. I know it's good for me. And I know it's good for the planet. I'm with you, man. It's like, and one of the things that I noticed is like, oh, we have a deer in our, love, you see the deer? There you are. <laughs> Can you see him? He's right by the between the fence and the. Oh my god! <laughs> we can't see it. Sorry, man. Jenny, I can see Jenny saying, "Oh my god!" That was so cool. They never come. In our they never come. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joe. So Bob Ferguson, who's from Oxfam, who's a partner of all of this, they actually have a uh, a guy too called Eat for Good. I think we put a link actually just above his comment. But he was wondering, how are you preparing chickpeas for breakfast? What are you doing? Oh well. Um, first we open the can <laughs> next thing we because it's important we save the juice because oh yeah the aquafaba making, yeah she's making this great vegan chickpea mayonnaise out of it it's unbelievable it's really good so what I do is every morning I have this is my breakfast I have uh, chickpeas with hummus and a little olive oil all over that a little cracked pepper mm-hmm in the summertime, sometimes I take tomatoes and cucumbers and throw it in there. And I always have sauerkraut with it. I really like sauerkraut for breakfast. Um, and um, what is the other item I sometimes... Sometimes we have beets. Yeah. I like the way they kind of get all pink in the oil, mm -hmm. the sauerkraut. And the, it's really fun, you know what I mean? The way it all gets sour and sweet and tangy and... Yeah. That's great. Cookies, it's just like, really? I'm eating them out of can. But we do. We have been making our own hummus too. Yeah, we, we've been doing that too. That's something I want. Actually, that's something I want to do. Like maybe we'll do like an in between one because it's so short. Like our, my hummus yeah. is like takes five minutes, and you don't even have to soak the. If you don't want to soak the chickpeas, even just the canned chickpeas, with the, and you hold on to the the aquafaba the water. That's what they call it, aquafaba. Yeah, apparently. I love that. Um, <laughs> you know, we've been doing them with the soaked with the. The, the raw ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. And my friend, uh, Ziona, who's very, uh, very excellent hummus chef, she told me that, you know, it takes a while, but you want to peel them. Mm -hmm. All the chickpeas. I'm like, you got to be crazy. And then I realized it's not that hard. You know what I mean? Wait, what'd you just do right there? So what, what just happened? Oh, because I had the black beans. Uh, I just kind of rinsed them out with the vegetable stock. Okay. There was a little bit left in the, in the pot. And then just added that into the soup. Yep. And, I, you know, really because Jenny's kind of shy. Otherwise, I'm going to put all, all the liquid back in the soup. But she doesn't want to be in the film. <laughs> Look, could, could you be off camera and just hold this for a minute? My wife is very shy and introverted. So what's about to happen? I got We got to put all this stock in here. Oh, okay. And you're straining, you're straining it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you hold that. Jenny, Jenny, are you hand modeling for us? Is that what's happening right now? I don't know. 
photo. Can you see my hand? <laughs> no, no, I can't see it. We, we're not seeing much, but that's all right. I imagine what we're seeing is you're pouring, Joe's pouring the stock into the thing and straining the vegetable, the hard vegetables out. <laughs> that's what just happened. Okay. Yep. Great. How's that smelling? It's smelling good. So then uh, we are really running out of time. So what? So to finish the recipe verbally, what do we? What do we have? Verbally, I'm sorry to disappoint. Oh no, no, no disappointment at all. This is great. We we've, uh, we've been talking. We have been, which we which we are want to do. <laughs> I'm going to put these greens in as soon as it gets nice and hot. Yeah. And then after uh, it's all, that's when like we're gonna we're like, hey, we ready to eat? Put them in 15 minutes before we eat. And then at the very end, I've got a nice little bit of cilantro, some fresh lime, and I made sure we got a ripe avocado. And so we'll just put a couple avocado slices on the top, mm. squeeze a little lime on that, and put some cilantro in there, and baby, good. <laughs> I'm gonna make one more thing because I wanna give it a plug. Yeah. You pulling out some hot sauce? Is that what's about to happen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, mean, I am going to put some of this hot sauce on it. Do you remember Jeremy Lister, the yeah. Lister Brothers? Yeah, yeah. You know they had the they were like the the people on the Sing Off when Ben Coles had the show. Yeah, the uh, symphony, Street Quarter Symphony. Anyway, these they the brothers make these sauces are unbelievable. I wouldn't even I might if I wasn't friends with them I would say. Please order some of this sauce. It's because it, what it is is like they fire roast their chilies. Mm -hmm. And so it's smoky and delicious. And the whole ingredient is just peppers, distilled vinegar, onions, salt, and garlic. There's no no garbage in there. That's awesome. But they're vegan. They're like super healthy marathon vegan. Like Jeremy, I found out, runs a boot camp at 530 in the morning. <laughs> My plan was going to go. He's like, 530, though? I don't know. That was Blister. If people want to check that out, we can. Uh, yeah, Blister. Blister. All right. Yeah. Awesome. I, you've actually, I remember you talking them up when I was over your house when we were. Just yeah, we tried it. Remember, we put the hummus on crackers and tried it. Yeah, it's delicious. It's really good. It goes great with the black beans. You know what I mean? It goes great with my breakfast foods and whatever. That's awesome. Well, Joe, thanks so much for doing the show. It's always great to see your face, man. And man, likewise, my brother. I, you know, I wish you well. I can't wait to see you again soon. Uh, I love seeing your house, your house. I've s slept many a night there, so it feels like a second home to me. And uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks to Cliff Bar and Oxfam. And uh, again, Joe, thanks for joining us. This is great. Thank you, Adam. And uh, thanks to everybody who watched and played along. Yeah. For those of you, if you came in late into this and you want to watch the whole episode, we will be putting up on, uh, well, it'll be here on Facebook. And also this episode and the other 12 episodes, this episode, Lucky 13, uh, are also at Reverb.org slash Quarantine Kitchen. So tune in there. The recipes are all there. The videos are all there. There's a lot of really great foods. I don't know what it is with Guster, but it's funny. Brian came on. He was the first episode, and he made cauliflower soup. There's something about Guster and soup, apparently. Soup. <laughs> With the soup. Man. With the soup. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it. Everyone have a nice evening, Joe. Have a bye good bye. night. Bye, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs>